Okay, here are a few notes about this uh, flying fish gimbal. Okay, the uh, board that I made is on there, as you can see. Works nicely. Not a lot of space in there. 13 millimeter spaces. I just figured that was the uh, ideal. By the way, it's working now. You can see the gimbal. But okay, so plugged it into the uh, default uh, F2 on the NASA. Kept all the defaults. Have a potentiometer. Calibrated that, and it works. I can go down 45 degrees. I can go down. 90 degrees and I can go up about 45 degrees. I didn't change any of the gains in the NASA. It doesn't have its own software like the Toro so I'm just using the NASA. That's about hmm, maybe more than 45, maybe 50. Anyway, it seems to work fine. Um, this Phantom also has some of the expanding legs that I put on. And it also has a switch on the back. Oh, it has a, a USB to uh, run the assistant. It has a switch over here for the gimbal, the FPV, and the little EOSD. If I turn this off, the, the, uh, the gimbal went off and the FPV. The motors are still usable. Hmm, I got a rubbing issue. Oh, because I didn't put the top on yet. It's rubbing. But anyway, that's that's fine. Um, switch the gimbal back on. And uh, it takes a while. And then it pops into place. So that's pretty much it uh, for the Flying Fish Gimbal. Oh, one more thing I wanted to point out is if you look right there, there's a, a little USB that I uh, put in. Let's see if I can expand this thing. There's a little USB right there hanging down through one of the holes. So, yeah, I can just take a, uh, a power thing and plug it in to that and you should get a charge. There's a charging light on the uh, camera now. So you can charge it from externally using the uh, ready-made RC uh, GoPro 3 cable. Thanks for watching.